Hello, hello, hello. Hopefully you can hear me. Um, hi, uh, Sky Sports F1, Rachel Brooks here, doing another live with you with a Formula One driver from the 20, uh, 20 grid when we eventually get to it. Thank you very much for joining. Just going to let a few more people join and then I will connect to our guest for this uh, Instagram live this week. Uh, thank you for all the questions that have been coming through as well. Lots and lots of you have been coming through with questions and I will put those to him once he joins on live here. I'm just going to see if he's there and then we'll be able to uh, talk to him this afternoon. Hope you're doing okay. Um, I know it's lovely weather outside but uh, it's worth watching this one because somebody who's been waiting a very very long time to get into formula one and uh is and should be and will be on the grid this year nicholas latifi nice to see you you as well how's it going not bad not bad how about you where where are you at the moment you're in canada but whereabouts uh i'm still back home in toronto at my parents house right now okay cool and is that a good place to be you all still getting along okay yeah it's all it's all good uh, i'm actually enjoying the family time quite a bit it's uh it's quite unprecedented for me, this amount of time uh, at home with my family. So I think since I started racing, I, I haven't spent this much time with them. So yeah, it's been like well over uh, 10, 11, yeah, 12 years since I got this amount of quality time. <laughs> what about um, the situation there in Toronto? How locked down, if you like, are you? So, uh, I mean, up until, well, still right now, it's uh, it's pretty similar, I think, how it is when we, when we last spoke. So um, yeah, it's all non-essential businesses are are closed right now still being encouraged you know self-isolate stay home if unless you you need to get out for something uh but i think uh if i heard correctly either at some point later this week or next week they're going to start opening up a little bit um uh, so they're going to allow gatherings of i think somewhere between around 10 people that's going to be allowed uh some businesses are starting to open this week carding tracks are and race tracks are opening up so i'm uh I'm definitely excited for that. I'm going to try and get some uh, some carding in before coming back over to, to London, uh, which is good. Uh, so, yeah, slowly uh, it's opening up now. It obviously doesn't mean the, the pandemic is, is over. So I think everyone still has to, to be, be careful, but uh, at least it'll maybe give a little bit more freedom. <laughs> What about um, haircuts? It's been a massive topic of conversation. I don't know about you, but have you let anybody else cut your hair yet? Uh, I, I let my mom have a go with uh, a, a little bit of uh, clippers raised with, uh, you know, when with guy hair, I think it's a bit easy because you just put like the the, the cover on the, the razor and then it can only go so short, right? So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I haven't let anyone touch it uh, with proper scissors to go short, but I think very, very soon I will. <laughs> what about um, keeping fit? I saw you put a video up the other day. You've got quite a nice gym there or a decent gym there, plenty of equipment to use. You, you look pretty lucky in terms of, kind of being able to maintain your fitness. What are you missing though, do you think? Um, I think the biggest thing I'm missing is, uh, is a Formula One car and a track to drive it around. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm definitely quite fortunate that I, I do have a home gym here. Uh, you know, my, obviously I don't live here full time, but you know, uh, my parents are also quite active as well. So they, they, they love to have a gym to, to train. And uh, yeah, it's been really great during, during this period. Um, you know, for sure, if, if I didn't, I would have to get a bit more uh, creative, uh, which could maybe not be as, as motivating if you're just following, let's say, at-home workouts. And, and I've, I've done them before. I've, I've tried them. And uh, I think that's what I'm going to have to do once I go back to London, which will probably be sometime uh, very soon. But, uh, you know, the job still has to get done, so I'm sure I'll, I'll get on fine. But, yeah, I think nothing is going to replace uh, actual driving uh I mean, whenever we go back after the long winter and in for winter testing, it's your body gets an absolute shock and it doesn't matter how much you train, it's, it's, uh, it just destroys your body. So I think train as much as you want, but once we get to go back racing, which is fingers crossed in Austria, uh, yeah, I think it'll still be quite, uh, quite tricky. Yeah, you, I mean, you've waited. So you didn't start karting till quite late, did you? You were sort of 13 or so when you started karting, yeah. but within three years you were into single seaters weren't you and racing but do you what, what's this has been a really long wait for you how do you deal with the fact that you got to the paddock on Thursday and thought I've made it I'm in Formula One and then by Thursday night we're all sitting around that evening getting the messages through and it stopped suddenly I mean how have you dealt with all that yeah it was uh, it was very weird uh, I mean it's I, I keep saying and I mean now that it's been a few months since we're in this situation it definitely feels real but when it first happened it, it definitely didn't feel real it felt like 
something out of a movie and then seeing the the coming weeks how everything was changing and evolving so quickly it was it was insane i i really couldn't wrap wrap my head around it but uh yeah i mean at the end of the day regardless of the fact that it it was going to be my debut in in, in f1 it, i mean it's still the same situation for everybody else so uh yeah it, it was it was very disappointing for sure uh as you said kind of a long build up to that we're, we're a day away from actually driving uh, a few days away from getting to go lights out on on the grid uh, and then, yeah, have it taken away is it was it was it was very strange. But I mean, I'm just been keeping ready. Uh, I, I know the opportunity is is going to come eventually. Uh, again, it's coming up sooner now. Hope, uh, yeah, which is which is quite good. But uh, yeah, nothing really you could do, and just trying to stay stay prepared and uh, and both mentally and physically sharp for when we get to go racing again. I mean, I think we've heard today that um, the UK government, in terms of the quarantine rules, we might not be able to come back if we went yeah. to Australia for a few weeks. So we may be looking at four weeks in a row, four races in a row, four weekends in a row, and being away, obviously, from the UK for that amount of time. How do you feel about that? How, like, how do you prepare as a driver? Because back-to-backs are tough enough as they are for drivers. I mean, you have to take the Monday as a rest day. You have to get your mm-hmm. body back in order again. But four weeks in a row is going to be amazing, isn't it? How are you going to be able to deal with that? Yeah, it's. Um, I, I think a lot of it will be kind of just dealing with it as as it comes. I mean, I've always been one to be honest that as like the back to back to back races, uh, partly because of the fact that uh, you know that I don't live in Europe, and uh, it, basically it always kind of worked out that if there was more races packed into a short amount of time, it meant that there was a bigger time off at some point, uh, which would then mean maybe a, a time for me to go back home and, and see family because obviously not living in Europe, I don't get to go home uh, Sunday night and, and spend those few days in between the races. So, uh, yeah, it, it's uh, it's definitely going to be, be quite a lot. Um, yeah, w- whether we're going to be, you know, all at, well, first few races we're supposed to be at Austria, then whether we go to a different track, which I'm reading uh, as of today, could be Hockenheim in place of Silverstone. Uh, yeah, four weeks on the road will be will be tough. I mean, I'm, I know I'm prepared for it. I'll, I'll be able to deal with it. Uh, I think it'll be quite difficult for the teams, uh, team members. Uh, you know, it's, it's not just the drivers that have to do with it, all the, the team management, uh, the mechanics, the engineers away from all their, their, their family as well. So, um, yeah, I think it'll be a very... Uh, Again, I think we're going to have to deal with it as it comes, but it, it'll be quite tricky because it, it, if it's just, let's say, the first month like that, I think it'll be fine. But if it's, you know, constant month trips away because of this quarantine rule, uh, I, I'm hoping that the UK government will loosen things up at some point because I, I don't see us being able to do the whole season like that personally. Yeah, it'd be tough. But um, I think I guess we'll take whatever it is because we just want to get back racing, don't we? And you want to start the racing. Yeah, so. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. From fans. We've got loads of questions coming in from fans here. I'm going to try and put a picture up if this works, but I don't know if it's going to work. So bear with me just one second. Um, yeah, we had lots coming in from people. And there we go. I've got it. So someone's asked about your relationship with George. <laughs> And they've said, what's it like having a teammate who always takes his shirt off or is allergic to shirts? <laughs> well, uh, I'm just happy he never takes the shirt off. I can save you so, there. I think that's you. Yeah. you you're yeah. holding that sack out, I should say. Yeah, yeah. Right, <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I mean, thankfully, he doesn't take his shirt off uh, in front of me deliberately so much, so that's fine. Uh, but uh, no, no, me and George get along very well. Um, I mean, already from, from last year that I was the, uh, the reserve and test driver for the team, uh, let's say it was my first time sharing a team with him let's say so uh already got to let's say know him a little bit better than than we did in in, in previous years i mean uh 2018 and formula 2 was the only year uh, we had actually raced in the same series uh so this is a bit of an age difference between us as well so i was let's say always a, a few categories ahead um but yeah we've been getting along very well uh both on the working side for the team which is great because you know it, it helps to have a good team atmosphere uh team dynamic and kind of to help the team morale but also on the personal front i think we get on uh, also quite well what about the um the sim racing because i've seen a lot of you guys have obviously been doing a lot of that is that helping you build relationships with other drivers on the grid without seeing them personally yeah definitely uh i mean uh apart from I, Antonio. I, I, yeah yeah, yeah well, that's okay. he sent me a message after apologizing he, he said his game crashed at that moment which i kind of believe him because he he was out of the race after that moment but uh yeah, I, I still got a little uh, red X in my book <laughs> next to his name. No, <laughs> um, no, no, it's it's actually been really cool because, you know, I, I didn't think all of us drivers would take to it as much as we did. Uh, I mean, uh, for, for anyone who's still following it, I mean, I'm sure kind of seen in maybe in the recent week or, or two, it's kind of 
we kind of all haven't been streaming as much and maybe not messing around as much as we were in those first weeks and i think it's kind of because maybe the 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 fun or excitement of it is, is maybe kind of died down a bit and it is quite Nobody's a lot of worn uh, off. yeah exactly it is kind of a, a big time commitment as well i mean i know i've spent uh much less time preparing for the races and, and the f1 the f1 virtual gp races mainly but even all the other little ones i do because it really is if you want to be competitive you have to put so many hours and uh i just kind of diverted a bit priorities the past weeks to kind of focusing a bit more on the physical side than, than the gaming side but uh, yeah it's, it's been cool to see how all the other drivers got into it and um yeah so like just kind of socializing uh conversing and entertaining fans as well all, all at the same time so yeah i think for the uh select few of us that have actually gotten into it i i think it's uh if the relationship wasn't already strong before i think it definitely has built something which is which is quite nice I've got a question from Owen72. What's your favorite road car? Favorite road car? Um, I'd have to say the LaFerrari. <laughs> Anyone? Oh, LaFerrari, I was going to say. LaFerrari, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Toby Shepard wants to know, what's your target for the championship when we get going? Um, so it's a difficult one because we're still not exactly sure uh, – you know, as a team where we are going to be on the grid. I mean, we, we know we had a good preseason testing and we know it's a step forward from last year, but it, it will be difficult to say, I want to finish in this position. But all I can say is, uh, you know, I, I have a, my teammate as a reference who I know is going to have the same car as me. So, you know, like any racing driver, you want to beat your teammate. So uh, for sure, I want to beat George, but I'm also well aware that going into Formula One as, as a rookie, it's, it's very difficult. So uh, I know he's going to have the advantage in the first races, but I definitely want to get, on pace with him and push him as, as soon as possible and uh, and help bring the team further up the grid. Um, I've got this one from 8-Ball Dave. If you could change one regulation, what would it be and why? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> if I could change one regulation. Um, what about, I mean, what well, if, you, know, you, get, you, get, you lose points for, say, gearbox and uh, places, yeah, you know, five places or whatever, you know. Is it, is it, it's tough on the driver because the driver's done the hard work in qualifying, say, and then when that's replaced for the race on Sunday, he he has to do make up all the groundwork. Is it a t penalty for the team? Maybe I don't know. Yeah, but I would I would definitely say something like like that. I mean, as I haven't um, personally experienced those and felt the the pain of of those, uh, let's say that was what came to mind first. But it but it is a good point. Yeah, I mean, I and I know it's it's been talked about before that the driver shouldn't be penalized. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's team, just the team as in whether they get fined or whether it's uh, constructor championship points, but not driver points, something like that. But I was going to say, I, I think for sure uh, they should be points given out for qualifying, at least two points, kind of like they do in uh, for pole position, obviously. Only. Yeah. So kind of like they do in, in Formula 2. I think Formula 2, they give out too many points. Four points is quite a lot. Uh, but I, yeah, one thing I never really liked so much about Formula 1 is, uh, yes, okay, there is has been dominance from teams always i mean that's how it's been and this you're always going to get the same cars on pole but uh you know sometimes you can get the pole position and everyone makes such a big deal out of saturday which is the qualifying day pole but in reality if you get a bad start it means absolutely nothing so i think qualifying is one of the most difficult parts of of being well of racing in general uh and if you get on pole you should be rewarded from for that in, in my opinion so yeah i'd say give give at least two points for uh pole position would you like reverse grid races um I, the, the only reason uh, uh the only way i would like to see reverse grid races implemented is if we have two races because uh, again i think that the dna of formula oh, yeah. one is I mean, yeah, the, I mean with the normal yeah. One, yeah ah okay yeah so short, yeah i mean a short reverse grid race like you have in f2 yeah yeah i mean I think that would be cool i think it would definitely only add to the 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 excitement of of the weekend i mean reverse grid races in formula two are uh yeah, I mean, having taken part in a lot of them, they're, they're really fun, they're chaotic, they're unpredictable. Uh, and yeah, they always throw something up that, that, that no one expects. So I think that could be quite, uh, quite cool. Uh, maybe even a, um, a larger portion of the reverse grid than they do in Formula 2. Formula 2 is obviously only the top eight, but uh, in, in Formula 1, as there, let's say, is a bigger disparity between the car performances, it could be cool to have something even bigger. So maybe top 10, top 15, or why not just, flip the whole grid around completely so yeah that'd be quite cool <laughs> 20 down to one why yeah. not um, this is coming from a few people actually um and i just saw cheryl send it in as well on here have you picked up any new talents during lockdown 
Um, to be honest, no. I mean, not been cooking, not nothing. No, uh, no, no cooking. I mean, I my knowledge of uh, PCs has improved quite a bit, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> partly because I was making a lot of upgrades to my sim and uh, my, my home sim, and also setting up a lot of the stuff with with the streaming and things like that. I mean, I pretty much. I, I pretty much did it all by myself, like setting up all my overlays and, and initially. Then I got some help from my 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 team that works with me afterwards. But to, to get it all set up initially, it was I, I was quite proud of myself that I because I'm not a tech guy at all, like at all. I, I have like the Apple products and stuff like that, but Apple is all pretty much like dummy proof. You could uh, <laughs> a, a four year old could use Apple products, but PC stuff, yeah. So I'd say became a bit more. Uh, technologically competent <laughs> <laughs> i know the feeling i know the feeling i'm going to set these comments off just for one second so that we can um, see your face because you're getting blocked by them all um oh, right, let's have a look. Uh, who inspired you the most to be an f1 driver and why that's from leandra maruna i think um so to be honest there was there wasn't really a driver or person that inspired me to want to be an f1 driver i mean i wanted to, to get into formula one and try and reach formula one just from my own personal passion and and, and and loving motorsport when i got into it um now the, the drivers that i look up to and I, I always say i don't idolize one specific driver uh but there's three drivers that i always highlight that i would love to uh emulate certain uh characteristics of them and the three that i always refer to are michael schumacher uh Fernando Alonso and Hamilton, each for their own different reasons. Uh, they, they all have specific, obviously all accomplished a, a lot in Formula One, but uh, they each have their own individual strengths, uh, which which I think pulling them all together would make the ultimate driver. <laughs> <laughs> um, this one says, uh, it's got from golfer, lifeguard, trainee, busy. Uh, will you have lots of helmet design changes for the season? Now you're allowed to. Um, I was definitely planning a few of them. Uh, I mean, I'm going to have my obviously baseline helmet, which already is going to be a small, some small changes to the ones I used in, in, in testing. Uh, but yeah, for sure, I was planning a special one for Canada and possibly two other races, but uh, I'll keep those a, a surprise. First, we have to see if we end up racing at, at those races uh, because, yeah, I mean, right I now... Feel, I, guys, because Singapore, everyone brings out these great, sparkly yeah. and amazing helmets and helmet designs and no, we're not going to be there. They've got to save yeah. for another year. I mean, Keep I'm a bit going. worried now because um, Canada's not even on the calendar right now, unfortunately. I mean, still, still a lot can change, but uh, yeah, kind of waiting for that to be confirmed, which is hopefully very soon. <laughs> We've got James Pigeon. How do you think you're doing Sunday's e-race? Can you beat George? Uh, so Sunday's e-race is, oh, it's Monaco uh, this time. Yeah. Um, so again, kind of like what I was mentioning before, I mean, I'm, I'm not practicing a crazy amount for them. Uh, so I don't know how much the other guys are practicing. I know Charles, um, Charles was practicing like eight hours a day. At yeah. Least, so. Yeah. For, for, for the Australian and, uh, and channels. I mean, I was probably putting in the, I mean, not that extreme eight hours a day, but I was putting in a lot of time. I think for Brazil, I probably put like probably 15 hours of, of play time in. And you can imagine why I was even more mad when the, what happened with Antonio happened because it's kind of all, all, all that is for nothing for something out of your control. But uh, you did yeah. well and you qualified well and you were going well with that little practice before. Yeah. Wasn't yeah. So, um, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously hoping to still do well, but I mean, for, for me, this game is really just about how many hours and, and you put into it to find a little trick. So uh, I know I'm not going to be practicing a crazy, crazy amount. Uh, I've only done about an hour of, Let's see the time trial practice for Monaco right now. So, uh, but I'm so excited for it. It should be quite a quite an entertaining one. I mean, it's Monaco, right? So, <laughs> it just won't be anyone on the yachts to wave to. Yeah, um, well, we're going to get virtual fans. <laughs> this is true. This is true. Um, obviously, people don't know a lot about you yet in Formula One terms. You've been around the other series and your F2 and Formula Three and European. What What can you tell us about you that we might not know? What a I don't know, have you got any unusual hobbies or is there anything you've done in your life that's a bit different or what well, can you tell fans they might not know about you? Um, so I, I've, I've been getting asked this question a lot actually from uh, different uh, journalists, interview questions about like, yeah, what's something that, what are three things people don't know about you? I always struggle to answer this one. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I always just, the first thing I always say, well, my, my biggest pet peeve, let's say, which is... Uh, uh tardiness i guess i say so when if, if people are late for me yeah. b being being punctual 
is uh, is very important uh, for me. And uh, yeah, so if someone is is late, especially when it's a, an event or something involving multiple people, it really doesn't sit You've well with me. You've been quite small for that because I've never known <laughs> yeah. a sport like it for being on time and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> what about superstitions? Are you superstitious? Um, Have a left sock before a right sock or a no uh, to be honest nothing like that i mean I, the only thing that i think most drivers will do is you always get i always get in the car from from the same side or try to which for me is always the left side it depends on uh drivers but yeah i, I always try and get in from the left side if i get it from the right side it just feels feels different there's been a few times i've gotten in from the right side and i'm just like no that didn't feel right and, and then i was like oh if i had a did i have a bad race okay i gotta make sure i didn't <laughs> don't do that again I, I i even had a thing with actually some uh, some red pair of boxers. I had a few different pair of uh, red boxers that I'd always wear on race day. But then there was, I think, one race I had that was not good and I wore a different color and then I had a good race. I was like, oh, no, that doesn't make sense anymore. Yeah, so. you can't do that, can you? Yeah. You just said you can't. Wear the same pair for every race of the entire yeah. season. Um, are you nervous about your debut? Charlotte Taylor, Mrs. Hufflepuff, wants to know. Um, I mean, I, I definitely think once, once we get on track and maybe the lights are about to go out, there will be some nerves. I mean, right now, I'm... Um, I mean, and, and even to the point uh, we were at in Melbourne, so a few days away, I, I wasn't really nervous uh, then yet. I mean, it was still, you know, I'd, I, I'd always said the fact that I was with Williams uh, last year and kind of comfortable in the team environment and the fact that I've had uh, Formula One experience from previous years kind of has made me feel more, more prepared. And uh, I think preparation and, you know, knowing kind of deep down that you, you do feel ready for the jump, it, it, it helps a lot with it can help a lot with those nerves in those situations. So, um, but yeah, I mean, for, for sure, when, when the lights are about to go out, there's always going to be those little bit of butterflies, but I think that's, that's normal, but I think more than anything, just excited. <laughs> I think everyone's going to have those this year because everyone's had to wait so long for it. Yeah. Sweetie Manuel wants to know, um, does, does lockdown going to change the game? Is it going to be a positive maybe for Williams? I mean, th there's a lot of, I mean, I know we've had put off 2021 rules now and they've been delayed, the new rules, but there are a lot of people feeling like, well, Yes, we had testing, but we've now had however many months it's been since testing. Is everyone starting? I know you've got the top three teams will move away, but in terms of how you're feeling, do you think everyone it's leveled things up a little bit, the playing field? Um, that's a good question. I mean, to be honest, I I don't really I wouldn't really say it's leveled the playing field, but I would definitely say it's. I I, I think it's hopefully going to create some more opportunities. And when I say that, I mean. Uh, because the fact that it has been so long off for, for everybody and obviously, I mean, the factories have been all shut down during this time. So, I mean, even though it's been a long break, it's not that teams are, are able to work on the car because, or any part of the car, because it's just, it's not allowed. So uh, I think when we do get back to racing, uh, there will be a lot of, uh, let's say rust from, from all members of the team I mean, including the drivers. And if it's the longest, any of us will have been without driving a, a Formula One car or a competitive like high performance car let's say um so yeah i mean but from from the team side the operational point of view the mechanics uh you know running just the weekend smoothie i i, I definitely think there's going to be mistakes i think there's going to be uh yeah i mean i i hope we are a, a team that can can limit them but that's why i say that i think there could be some some opportunity in there because uh you know we, we're I think even though we're still not exactly sure where we are going to be in the running order, we know we're going to be far forward, but I think it's no doubt we are still going to have to rely on some, uh, some opportunities thrown at us to capitalize and, and, and get some good results. So uh, this period right now where it's kind of, you know, thrown up some, uh, some unknown, some uncertainties, I think it could only benefit us if we're, if we're ready to capitalize on them. And also, I guess, it depends where you where you start the season, but in terms of the development race, there almost isn't a development race this season, is there? It's basically just preparing for next year because so we'll be starting so late in the year and it's going to be so busy. And also, I guess, money-wise as well, teams will be struggling financially this year that the development race might not even happen this year. Yeah, I, I think that's, that's a very good point as well. I, I, I'm just thinking that, yeah, however the, the competitive order is in the first few races is pretty much how it's, uh, it's going to stay, which, uh, I mean... To a certain extent, you do kind of see that anyways, even when the year is wide open. I mean, the top teams will stay at the top. Uh, you can get a bit of a shake-up, let's say, in the midfield sometimes. But, uh, yeah, for sure the teams that, uh, let's say, aren't don't have the capability to to be as quick in the development race throughout the year will also have a benefit this year because, as you said, it'll just probably stay more more flatline and, and keep keep everyone more where where they are. <laughs> 
Okay, well, listen, what are you going to do with the rest of your day? Because you're five hours behind or six hours behind us there, aren't you, I think? Uh, yeah, so I have uh, another few uh, interviews after this. And uh, then I have a, a race, actually, an e-race. at uh, starts at 9 p.m. UK time to any UK fans. Uh, I've been posting something on my Instagram story about it. But, yeah, just something for fun, racing GT3s around Barcelona. <laughs> Awesome. Well, it's for fun, but it's also for money. To be honest, the first three three positions get money. I won uh, eighty US dollars a few weeks ago for finishing third. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been practicing for that one. <laughs> yeah. uh, not a lot, but uh, yeah, hoping to get some money. <laughs> Brilliant. Listen, thank you very much for talking to us. We'll see you on Sunday in the Monaco E Prix as well uh, on Sky Sports F One. Thank you for your time, and we'll thank hopefully you. see you at a paddock somewhere very soon. Yep. Take care. Thanks Bye. a lot, Nicholas. See thank you. Guys. you. Cheers. Big thank you to Nicholas for joining us uh, on this live this afternoon. There's going to be another one next week, and uh, it's going to be Esteban Ocon, um, who's obviously now at Renault, and we're going to be talking to him on Sky Sports F1 on Instagram Live next Tuesday. Thanks for joining us. Stay safe, stay well, and we'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs>